Hello, hello, hello. If you could just add Kathy and I sent you her, her contact over there. I will. Okay, dokey. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Keith, for doing this. Um, I had purposely downgraded my Skype the day before, and I logged in this morning, and I didn't realize it automatically updated it again. <laughs> yeah, that, did that Skype will do that. Yes, it does that all the time when you least want it. <laughs> Anyways, anyway, everyone, welcome, welcome, welcome to Adventures into Reality. Kathy will be on in just a moment. We're having, you know, these stupid, stupid Skype issues. But today we are not going to be taking calls. Uh, Kathy and I have uh, some stuff we want to present, teachings for people to get into. The election is over. The pimple has been popped. And there's a whole lot of happy and angry people out there. And what we want to do is a way to saddle people down, to let go of the infrastructure of distraction and all the things that are pissing people off. We want to be able to give something to to people that have been the regular listeners. You know, normally we do the call-in show, the readings, but the last three weeks, Kathy and I haven't been able to be together. We lost a very, very close friend to, our, to, our, to both Kathy and myself. That's Natalie. And now we want to come back to radio and just really present some of the truths that we have to bring forward. Ah, oh, you said everything very, very well. Very, very well. It's great to be back. Great to be actually on air. Thank you so much, Keith. You are the man. Caught me at just the right moment. <laughs> <laughs> really, I was taking a short break, and there you are. <laughs> Synchronicity. I love it. Thank you so much. You are a hero today. Hero. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> For the power of Skype has struck again. <laughs> 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 we will not be thwarted by technology. <laughs> Always the human touch is the most important. That's and it right. is really great to be back. It's great to be back together, talking about stuff and just celebrating life, really celebrating life, thinking about what's gone on this year, what's about to be wound up and what's coming up the next year. I mean, what an awesome time to be alive. <laughs> We started this year with the Year of the Monkey show. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that pesky monkey. <laughs> exactly. He's been dancing on all our backs. <laughs> oh, but, you know, I am really, really looking forward to the rooster. I mean, you know, cock-a-doodle-doo. Do roosters? Yeah, roosters do that, right? <laughs> And they're the ones that cock a doodle do, the, 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 the hens really don't. <laughs> <laughs> yep, January 28th, we're all going to be entering the new year from the Chinese horoscope. I can't wait. I mean, there is just so much more exciting and positive things in store for us. But we're already entering that energy um, of the year of the rooster, the new year, and winding down the current year, which is the year of the monkey. So I can all collectively hear everyone say, whoo. <laughs> it's been a tough year for all of us in so many different ways, whether it's on a personal front, a financial front, a business front, a health front. But for those of us that have been had the luck, I guess, and the um, wiles and the agility to sidestep the monkey. We are survivors. <laughs> we are moving forward and we are embracing the fact that this is just going to make us stronger. Not only is it going to make us stronger, it's going to teach us the lesson of the monkey and it'll be many years before monkey comes back. Yeah, <laughs> 12 years. We can all <laughs> breathe in relief. <laughs> this is a, we're cool and breezy for 12 years. <laughs> uh, last, last night I was, uh, I was, ended up being up very late last night and I was watching, uh, uh, catching up on a TV show, the John Oliver show called Last Week Tonight. And at the end of the show, he had a little special thing for the 2016. It was the most awful year of, awful year of many, many years. And he uses a swear, swear word. Basically, it's a reverse of welcoming 2016 to telling 2016 to never come back. Words, <laughs> <laughs> And I must have laughed for a good 15 minutes straight after watching that little, that little six-minute piece on, on Get Rid of 2016. <laughs> toodaloo, toodaloo. 
don't come back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's just been such an amazing year. I mean, on top of all of the chaos and the, um, what should we say, the ups and downs of the monkey, I mean, there is a lot of good things that have happened this year. Um, and every little thing that has happened, you're like, ooh, that's a win. <laughs> I'm going to mark that in the win column. <laughs> it definitely is in the win column. I know, I'm going to put in big, thick pen. <laughs> <laughs> and that will cancel out those 10 other things. <laughs> oh, wow. Do you think that there, this is the time where people are going to really take it seriously to look back on the, the everything that's happened this year and start to chronicle what has happened in an overall sense and then start to create what they are going to welcome in for next year or what they want to embrace? I do. I think we're having, in the United States, two camps of people. One that is very disappointed in Hillary Clinton and one that's very approving of Donald Trump. And we have this pendulum where the, the, the side has been put towards Hillary for the longest time and it was its propaganda promoting it that way and then the big loss and the fact that Donald won. The, the country isn't going to heal at all and whenever the pendulum of anger switches from one side to another, there's going to be the need for revenge. And this is why I want to help people with what we're going to do special on the show. It's one of the reasons we're not taking calls is so we can present another way of seeing this world so we don't get caught up in this revenge energy. You know, Republicans for eight years blocked Obama, and now it's going to be the same thing on the Democrat side, unless there is a big change. Can there be change in the next 90 days? I doubt it. I doubt it so much that... This is why Kathy and I decided to change things up a little bit and help people just disconnect from that. The world's not going to end in 90 days. Nothing's going to happen tomorrow. I've been saying that for four years. Since 2012, I did a marathon on Wolf Spirit Radio that was titled, Nothing Was Going to Happen Tomorrow. Nothing's going to happen tomorrow, the day after, day after, day after. Do you see people out in the same scale and size as the 1960s and 70s chanting their own need for change, not the rebellious times of the 60s and 70s, but truly wanting a change from all of the generations that live now? We have a huge audience of people that are married, that have children, you know, so many that call in. And we, Kathy and I, have connected to so many of them over the last year. And they are caught in between husbands, grandfathers, grandmothers, uncles, and aunties who are all very political and not spiritual. And those spiritual people are going to get hammered over the next couple weeks by the people that are disappointed that Hillary didn't win and so on and so forth. And all the other propaganda-based stuff that's driving people to hate. And I give that warning. You're going to see a lot of revenge-based emotions on your social media and all this other stuff. Let it go. Let it go. So, yes, this is the time for people to take stock. What did happen in 2016 to you? What did happen in the world? And make a separation of what happened to others versus what actually happened to me. Mm, that is so true. That's so true. And, you know, just the social media has gone crazy, absolutely gone crazy. And you bring up such a valid point in that this is not the time to be thinking such terrible thoughts. You know, it, if you fill yourself up with such neg negativity, what on earth could you possibly attract that is positive? And this is the, one of the things that people really have to start to look at what's going on for them and their life and their emotions and start to let things go because revenge really is just such a negative emotion to be holding within you and taking up all this space that could be filled with, you know, abundance and love and creativity, whether even if it's creating your own abundance, financial or business, whatever it is, if you actually imagine yourself as being like a bucket and that's how much energy that you have in, uh, within yourself and you waste half that bucket with this negative revenge or angry emotion that only leaves half the bucket for creating things that you want and bettering your life, um, helping others, increasing your health status, etc. So you're really not doing yourself a, a, a what is it a service by having these negative emotions filling up all your space. 
Exactly. And another thing is, think of, you know, on, on a third-person perspective. When you read somebody else's face wall and they've got all that negative stuff up there, that's their buckets of energy that you happen to be slightly absorbing each time you're paying attention to it. Yes. I mean, it's like um, by osmosis, isn't it? I mean, just looking at it, it's hurting your eyeball. <laughs> it's osmosing into the eyeball. <laughs> and after a while, you become callous to it. Yes. And that's the worst thing. When you're callous to it, just like seeing somebody in the movies getting shot so many times that, you know, the movies, you know, had to have more and more gory scenes to get them to watch. Mm. Okay? Yes. So yes. callousness to it is just as bad as I ignorance to it, like ignoring it directly. Because you're still aware, you know, when you're ignoring it completely, you don't see it. But in callousness, you still see it. That is true. That is true. And having that numbness, you know, that's that's also very difficult. And it's it's one thing to be numb about, you know, whatever emotion you're feeling at the time. But you do have to pull yourself out of it no matter what. Because to remain in that inertia does yourself no service. In fact, you do yourself a disservice because you're just hanging in a balance. Exactly, exactly. I want to remind everyone that's listening, we are not taking call-ins today, so please stop calling the line. We are not taking call-ins today. I um, want to remind everyone else that Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com is a listener-supported station, so stop on by the site support button. Kathy, you and I have a special document that uh, we're going to present here, and it's something that I worked on between this Friday and Saturday with some two very, very special friends, and I expanded it a lot. And this was, you know, written for the 1111 energy, um, written for a way to help people make a moment sacred that teaches what's, what is a sacred moment. It is a combination of prayer and teaching of awareness. And it's titled Accepting the Fifth World of Peace. And the Fifth World of Peace is actually a Native American concept that was uh, created by um, the peace tree and a, and a whole bunch of other uh, concepts from like the early 1500s from the, the five nations of the Iroquois. Um, the peacemaker was a person that came and brought the five, the five clans together and they brought a, an everlasting, not an ever, a long lasting peace that was based in their traditions. And it has been spread around the whole world, known as the Warriors of the Rainbow, where a set of other original prophecies from many indigenous societies from all over the world had very similar teachings, um, prophecies, much like many religions share common concepts. So the fifth world of the peace is a time when all the clans and nations come together to heal the Earth Mother. It's a great vision from an ancient time. And I want to present that again at a new time where people can understand we can have our peace in these moments of now. And it'll be about letting go of those things that distract us and getting back to actually what makes a difference in the human being. You know, Kathy and I, each and every time we do a, a radio show or do sessions, we're not only making a difference in the person that we're working with, but in the seen and the unseen Yes, that is so true. Seen and unseen world. I mean, even just words to contemplate. Yeah, just to contemplate. Mm. So I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the first part, and then we're going to talk about it and try to explain it in the layman's terms. Um, this first part is more activation and teaching of getting people to be aware of the energies that are around them. All right, the title of this type section is Accepting the fifth world of peace. Okay, we're going to have the music pop up in six minutes. I should be done before that. Anyways, <laughs> I just realized that. <laughs> Talk faster at the end. <laughs> timing was off because of Skype. <laughs> <laughs> Accepting the fifth world of peace. I, in this ever-present co-creative moment of the now, connect my signature frequency of being with all aspects of myself in non-hierarchical order so I may deconstruct the reality around me and create it once more without the global infrastructure of distraction and instant gratification guiding me into false sacred moments. O oh, great spirit who gives life to all that is, was, and ever will be, 
I call to you in this sacred moment of infinite connectedness. Life is a series of interconnected moment-to-moment experience, blending with this I am's awareness of time, space, emotions, creating motions, experienced through the red road of time. I call to the Eastern doorway of perception, the ancestors who sit with the galactic and universal suns. Come with your clarity and illumination of eight color time. I activate my cranial sacral pulse with the highest frequencies of sun energy. So I may know the heartbeat that earth mother feels in the womb of the universe. I am a fetus in the universal womb, dreaming this dream in perfect clarity. I call to the Southern doorway of perception the ancestors who teach us to keep our internal waters in balance, to connect back to our sacred waters that surrounds us as a fetus in our mother's womb. In our density manifest, our pericardium is our eternal waters of life. I, in this ever-present connected I am self moment, clear my sacred waters of life through all dimensions, time streams, galaxies, and universes. I call to the western doorway of dream time perception. I call to the seven future generations of myself, my clan, my nation, and my earth mother. Come hold sacred space with my own self-reflection of who I am, what I am, and how I dream this dream. Me dreaming you, and you dreaming me, and the earth mother dreaming all of us in communion and union with source incarnate now. That's some powerful words. Very powerful words. Absolutely just, wow. It really, it's, I don't even know how to describe it apart from the mind blowing and makes you really have to think about all that. I mean, even the way you've you've talked about, you know, calling the eastern doorway, the southern doorway, western doorway, northern doorway, it just feels so powerful when you call them. Right. You're calling into those directions of life you know the east is illumination and clarity the west is dreams the north is ancestors and the south is our innocent and inner child and i've spoken about this on the radio and in teachings many many times when we give the world structure around us structure returns to us in the form of energy chi prayers good fortune synchronicities Mm. yeah i mean and even just the the synchronicities, the coming together, and the way that we, you know, you're talking about the internal waters of balance, just so powerful. And then to think about being the fetus inside the universal womb, you know, it, it, it's like, it's not like a rebirth, but it's like such an awakening. Yeah, it's an awakening that that takes people at an activation level. What are you choosing to awaken to? Are you mm-hmm. awakening to the world of distraction? Are you awakening to your own inter-reflection? Or are you awakening to somebody else's reflection? Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> You've just put another new level on that, mate. Huh? What? <laughs> exactly. Oh, I don't even think about that. Ah, and that's the, where we're stuck as an awakening world. The truther industry did its best to waken people up, but now it's at a point where people can only awaken to other people's dreams, other people's things they've created. Mm. Yeah, okay. So it's not even only other people's dreams. It's dreams that they've created from their dreams. Correct. It's like making a business and getting people to come to your business. If your business is awakening people, how are they going to awaken on their own? Mm. That is our music, and when we come back, we will continue our conversation. And welcome back, everyone. This is a reminder, we are not taking calls. Please stop. (laughs) Calling. <laughs> last week or the last time I was on the show, we had a number of people using a auto technical dialer in and they ended up getting banned. Please, please, please respect. We are not taking calls today, so please give Keith a break. Anyways, yes. Kathy, we have this incredible thing that we want to talk about. So 
I want to talk about when we're saying, I call, I call. When one does this as a prayer or I in this moment, it is acknowledging what is needed in life, new forms of awareness, new forms of clarity, new forms of dreaming, new forms of understanding past and future, how you look at it. When we have a a finite way of thinking, we don't have the access to that infinite dreaming world again. Infinite dreaming world. Now, that's already very, very interesting. I mean, we haven't always spoken that much about that. When you say infinite dreaming world, apart from just, of course, within the dream of our, let's say, reality here, do you mean also within all the galaxies that have, been like past, present, and future that also are in the dreaming world? That's right. We, we don't have access to them until we ask art for that ask, access or begin to make it a part of the networked being that we are. Mm. It's like if you've never read a book that's the most famous book in the world and all of a sudden you read it, you join a group of people who have read the book. Yes, that's so true. That's so true. And when you are uh, reading something like this uh, for yourself, you know, at home or outside during your ceremony, when you call to like the eastern door or the southern door, do you literally face those directions as you call to them? You can. It is all about what the choice of doing it is. If you are at that half recreational moment, it doesn't really matter. If you are in that full ceremony, that's going for extra credit for self-healing and self-nurturing. Mm. Well, that's good to know. I'm sure many people are wondering about that. Because especially if you're just sitting at home, like on your sofa or at your desk, you mm-hmm. know, it's all these little logistical details that start to come out yeah. in your mind. So I also really, really love that bit. Um, let me think how you put it. Was the... Um, come and hold the sacred space with my self-reflection of who I am, what I am, and how I dream this dream. I mean, when you said that, I just felt this like zang of energy that went throughout my body. It's because it's acknowledging the infinite. You know, me dreaming you, you dreaming me, that happens. That's truth. (laughs) (laughs) What are you doing in my dream? I recognize you. (laughs) Exactly. And then the next part, the Earth Mother dreaming all of us in communion union with Source dreaming now. Mm. That's the dreaming side, acknowledging it through a concept that is called the Western Doorway of Dream Time Perception. It's how you perceive the dream as this human that wakes up every day and goes to sleep every night. Mm. Mm. How many times are you and I people interpreting people's dreams? Yes, well, many, 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 too many to even think about. (laughs) Exactly, too many to even think about, okay? Mm -hmm. So the doorways represent areas of clarity, focus, and self-research. So the opening prayer does what? Gets you rid of infrastructure of distraction and instant gratification. You know, both you and I talk about, you know, getting over instant gratification because that's some of the greatest issues many people have is because how easy it is to gratify yourself with a meal, with a cell phone, with this, with that. But that gratification doesn't truly give you long-lasting healing, long-lasting nurturing, long-lasting education. Mm, Or even long-lasting satisfaction. Exactly. Which which is... A really hard lesson for people in you know modern day times to learn, uh, especially if if you're from you know a younger generation, it's it's like a part of your everyday life to have this instant gratification. Whereas if coming from older generations, you're like, wow, instant gratification, like what is that? <laughs> <laughs> you know the way you view things is very differently, and. Because of that alone, the way you perceive things becomes very, very different because your appreciation level is miles apart. Exactly. Here's another thing. Growing up, I had to use a telephone book if I wanted to go and find anything. Eee, you, telephone book! <laughs> okay? Talk about instant gratification. If you didn't <laughs> want that toy or this or that, you know, it's easy to go on your phone or your computer and find it and order it. That didn't exist 25 years ago. 
I know. I know. That's how much instant gratification has changed. It's at your fingertips now. Yeah. Now, you say your fingers had to do the walking through the phone book. You didn't always know the name of the company. You didn't know who supplied what. You would just call stores, you know, five, ten stores till you found what you were looking for. Yeah, if you were lucky. Because <laughs> <laughs> the, the white pages weren't always, you know, up to date. It's only a yearly book. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes, and then when the fax machine came, wow, that was instant gratification in that moment. <laughs> Yes, and, and this is the next level of, of understanding here. This type of presentation you know, can be done recreationally to practice it, but it is intended to do with the fullness of your discipline behind it so that it isn't an instant gratification. It's something that gives you long-lasting reflection, long-lasting new energies, ways to expand who you are. Mm, that is so true. And it, on top of that, you really have to think about the words that you're saying. I mean, the, your first read, you might even like gloss over um, a, a lot of the content or the core meaning of it, purely because the way you put the words together is also very meaningful. And, you know, with the attention span we all have these days, you know, through media and et cetera, you're like, what? Focus? What? Focus? For more than what 10 minutes did you say what what <laughs> so to actually go through this and read it say it out loud uh, sorry say it out loud and think about it in in its entirety as well as the individual words I mean even if you just took out like a little phrase like infinite inter interconnectedness I mean that on its own you're like wait, what does that mean? Oh, wait, no, that's what it means. No, no, wait, is that, no, is that what it means? No, now that I put it in here, and that alone is already a lot to process. So there's no really winging it and swishing on down through things like this, you know, in a lounge chair, just read it one time and that's it, you're done, and you, you know, um, what is the word? Um, enlightenment happens. <laughs> no. <laughs> exactly, there's no instant gratification enlightenment. Yeah. Brain power needs to be used. <laughs> brain and soul power. Yes, that is so the, true. If the brain's got no soul behind it, what's the point? Mm. That is true, because it, it doesn't have the same meaning without the soul behind it. Right, the and soul's the attention. Yeah, yeah, very much so. This next part is about understanding the next layer of attention. So I've just called, uh, I'll just finish, continue reading this part, and then I'll have you read the next part. I call to the northern doorway of ancestral Blue Road, Blue Road relations, those that have taught us and continue, continue to teach us what equal co-creation from heart space means in living every moment to moment with all sentient kind sharing the common moral code of do no harm to any creature kind. Expanding my awareness of the northern doorway I go deep into the Blue Road ancestral councils. I manifest my I am dreaming self in communion and union with Blue Road ancestors, council of elders. Now I'm going to stop right there and talk about these two paragraphs. Hmm. The ancestral yeah. Blue Road relations are the spirits, our mothers and fathers that have passed on, friends and family, dogs and cats, They've transited out of this layer of energy, but they're still here to teach us through our memories in equal co-creation. Wow. You know, I didn't know that. Ancestral Blue Road Relations. Wow. When, when, the, when you were writing this and that came to you, do you actually also have a visual image that came with you as the words... Came yes. Out? Yes. The ancestral blue road relations represents every person that I've had love for that has passed on. And blue road is another very Turtle Island Native American expression, and many indigenous societies use colors for representation of one that is passed on. The red is the the infrared world we live in. Your root chakra is red. The blue road is the crown chakras, the, the, the upper colors, the bluer colors, has moved out of the physical flesh. 
Mm. And they teach us through our memories. Our memories are still connected to them. You know, as a spiritual being, life mm. goes on after passing on. Mm. And in so many ways, that's just so comforting, you know, because especially when you've, you know, lost someone that's dear to your heart and you, you might think that it was, you know, too sudden or there's things you didn't, haven't said or mm -hmm. you just miss them so, so much. Mm -hmm. To know that you're still connected to them in some way really is very comforting to the heart, the mind and the soul. Right. Because we're truly never separated in many senses. We are interconnected and interrelated on so many different levels that you can't even really imagine it, right? Exactly. And then it continues on. I go to the Blue Road Ancestral Councils. I manifest my I am dreaming self. That is you, this person, who accepts their dream world on the Blue Road Council of Elders. That is taking the fullness of what you just did in calling to the directional doorways so that the fullness of your understanding of those that have passed on or those that are here to be guides and guardians. The blue road doesn't just represent those that have passed on. It represents angels, guides, guardians, dragons, animals, all those things that are teachers. Hmm. Okay, that's a lot more encompassing than I had originally thought. Yet, at the same time, I find comfort in that. Mm hmm so the next part here is offering an opportunity for them to speak back. So if you would go to the top of the second page where it mm -hmm. just says I pass, I just want you to read that paragraph in your expression. And I'm going to I'm going to explain a little bit of it afterwards. Okay. I pass the Blue Road communal talking stick to the chief elder of the north. A whole red row walkers. I say these words unto you. The generations of the past reach out to you in the unseen world no longer. We share your sovereign reality of do no harm to any sentient kind. We share our story with you. We share our teachings with you. So the future may exist. You are our living hope of continued service to all soul family lineages, lineages is evolving in the fifth world of peace manifested in the earth's space of spaces. Well, that, that, that statement right there is you are giving permission to speak to the chief elders after you have opened up a, a layer of your own expressions, the blue road, the north, the dreams, all of those things that make the infinite point of view something different than our current finite point of view. Mm. And look what the, it said back to you. It says, I recognize you. We share sovereign reality. We share stories. We share teachings. So a future can exist. Because they want the future too. You are our living hope of continued service. And what is service? Living life. Meeting people. Loving. And all of those things that mean living in this world. Mm. Acknowledging yes, that on a greater basis. Mm. Yeah, most definitely. And I, I also love the bit about the continued service to all soul family lineages. That's, it's, it's just such right wording. I can't even, can't even describe how right that feels. It takes, how do I put this? a mind to expand to infinites, but it just takes the human to try. By asking them to speak and allowing them to speak through words, even though if they're written on a page, brings a new potential. Okay? Mm. Now I'm going to read the next part, the next two paragraphs, because it completes the statement. I pick up the talking stick and acknowledge the rites of passage. With heart, space, knowingness, I make this, sense, this statement to all ancestors, past, present, and future. We, the generations of now, bear the responsibility of acting in the now. 
With this knowledge, I tell the tales of ancestors, past, present, and future. I choose to be the eternal storyteller in service to the fifth world of peace. I honor the passing of the torch of blue to red, accepting my place in the natural world as a living, breathing manifestation of non-duality, non-separation, dreaming, I am being, making ancient future now real. We have just answered the ancestors with a very similar statement, acknowledging they exist, acknowledging the service to each other through our memories, through our creations, through our greater power of knowing each other, even if there is no flesh between us. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and the, you know, I choose to be the eternal storyteller in service. That's also, wow, it's like, you know, the visualization I get from that is just amazing, you know, like the wise old sage at the fireplace. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure that's not what it is, but in my mind, it, that's, it, it represents to me all the stories from all the lineages past, all our ancestors passed down mouth to mouth, you know. That's right. It's right, oral traditions. You know, yeah. we, our society of oral traditions that has been replaced by social media, Facebook, Twitter, 24-hour news cycles. <laughs> I know. I know. It, it, you know, out of all of these, you know, new technologies, one of the things that, that really makes me sometimes question what's going on is, you know, your eyes get so tired all the time. I mean, and it's not just, you know, your environment or the air or the pollution or just even simple reading. It's just this constant assault. Exactly. It's almost it's like people awesome. are dancing on your eyeballs. <laughs> it's an assault on all six senses. Yes. Yes. That's exactly it. And that's what these first five paragraphs were meant to acknowledge. The senses are under so much assault I'm going to choose to end the assault by making myself have the infinite point of view because my finite point of view is overwhelmed. Mm. Yes, it, it really is. It really is. And just the duality of everything is just wow. Mm -hmm. So at the end there of that paragraph, living, breathing manifestation of non-duality, non-separation. Mm. That is what the, the, one of the biggest goals that spiritual, spiritual people have, that they can instantly enter the dream. They can be the I am being or the dreaming being without duality or separation. That is you know, the greatest thing that people have been looking for. And when we put that in a presentation to the ancestors who have just spoke back to us, it's an acknowledging that one day I will be that infinite being. But I make a choice today to work at it as my living, breathing representation of making it here now. Mm. That's a very good way to put it. Okay. Acknowledging it and then also being, having the realism. Right. And setting a goal. Okay. You know, making your ancient future now real. Right. You know, both you and I talk to people all the time about setting goals. Many yeah. set the worst short-term goals, or we get the other ones that have no long-term goals, or long-term goals that are so unattainable, they become martyring of themselves. Mm. <laughs> That's so true. Eh? <laughs> yes. And it, it's insane when you think about it, how you got to that way, because it, surely we're all got realism about us. Yet to give ourselves unrealistic goals. I mean, we've all done it, and, you know, and some of us still continue to do it. I mean, sometimes I do it occasionally, and I have to stop myself and think, you know what? That that's just pipe dream. I really have to think about realism. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Get back into reality and readjust my goals. And if I happen to do a bit more, great. But don't set yourself up for disappointment. Exactly. And so making these statements of what we've got going here allows an infinite point of view and it stops those future moments where shame, blame, and guilt of the self might come through. Mm. So the next paragraph, would you read that one? 
Yes. I connect. I connect the eastern and western doorways of perception with my I am presence. I unify my knowingness expressions with the northern and southern doorways of perception. I activate my DNA super technology of communion and union with source incarnate now. I am now in eternal communal oneness with the north, south, east and western doorways of perception. I call upon all prayers I have ever created in this I am lifetime to become manifest with this ever evolving will to pray and connect with our earth mother and our fifth world of peace. This is a day I make eternal sacred in my hall of Akashic records. This is my day of eternal victory. And that is an example of taking all of the things that gave the infinite potential and then make them connecting. As you were reading this, what, what, what were the parts of that, that, that stuck out to you? The parts that stuck out to me was, <laughs> the biggest thing was, this is my day of eternal victory. You know, the, 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 it was just such a big statement. It was like, but before I got to that, I could feel the lead up to coming to that. And to be calling upon all prayers I've ever created in this I Am lifetime, you know, I could just feel that down my back, down my spine, specifically between my shoulder blades. It made me like sit, you know, like a ramrod straight, <laughs> um, almost like I had this massive energy coming straight through me and just cleansing it out and realigning everything. And to even have that perception that you were activating your own DNA super technology, communion and union, that was like, oh... Wow, uh, you know, that, that, that's so big. Can I do that? Yes, of course I can do that. But it's just like, wow. <laughs> Every spirit is worthy of reaching the infinite potential. Every spirit, every human being is worthy. It took us a matter of 150 words to show how to do it for oneself. These are just words on, on a document. Yes, words that have a lot of powerful meaning to those that choose to be aware of it. Mm. Well, that's it, isn't it? Choose to be aware of it. Right. When you get to the point where you summon all victories of this lifetime, holy wow, people can actually do that. Yeah. <laughs> it's daunting to even think about, but at the same time, you're like, yeah, of course that's possible. I can do right. that. <laughs> Make a part of your life, so it's your eternal victory. Mm. Now, I'm going to read the next little paragraph. This finishes it off. I summon all victories of this I am lifetime and all other I am lifetimes this soul has been since the dawn of Blue Road No Time. I construct my eternal hall of personal victories so all I am selves may experience the victories of life. Every other version of yourself that may be in polarity, past, present, or future, suddenly has an eternal day of victory, suddenly is connected to your awareness in non-competition, non-hierarchical order, making the ancient future now real. Our ancestors of the past spoke to us saying, we are no longer in the unseen world. We're here to share service with you. If you are in service to the fifth world, making peace manifested on the surface of the world, Mm. I like it, making peace. That just feels like, mmm, good. Yes. It's like having a hot cup of cocoa on a cold day. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, but it just, you know, warm and fuzzy, every, all inside. I yes. love it. So do you want to read these final two paragraphs before we go to, or final three paragraphs before we go to break? Mm-hmm. I summon all victories of this I am lifetime and all other I am lifetimes this soul has been since the dawn of Blue Road No Time. I construct my eternal hall of personal victories so all I am selves may experience the victories of life. Bless me as I walk this sacred soil. Bless me as I breathe your sacred air. Bless me as I warm myself with sacred fire. Bless me with your sacred waters of life. Bless me as I learn to walk with personal power. Today, I travel the great unknown. Grant me the wisdom to be humble. Grant me the wisdom to love 
even when love is not returned. Grant me the knowledge to balance my way of being so I may heal my family, my tribe, my nation, and our Mother Earth. Today, I am of service to the fifth world of peace. <sighs> this is well, one of those lines that can make somebody's sacred moment, you know, very special for them. Mm -hmm. Yes, I mean, even saying the words was like, wow, mm -hmm. you know, calling upon those kind of things and asking to be blessed as you go forward to be these things and traveling into the great unknown. Oh, woo. All right, that is our break. We'll be back in four minutes and we will continue this incredible teaching we got going. And welcome back, everyone, to this second hour of Adventures into Reality. And Kathy, 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 how you doing? I'm good. I am very good. I'm really, really, what is the word? Bubbly happy to be back on the show with the two of us in our witty repertoire. Actually, uh, it's not so much witty repertoire all the time, but... <laughs> <laughs> to us, it's witty. <laughs> That's, it's, it has been, what, three, almost four weeks since we've been able to be on together. And, you know, it was a tough time for both of us. And Natalie was a very close friend to both of us for many, many years. But, you know, taking taking the time we both needed. And, uh, you know, now we're at a time where getting back to, to what it is that we did radio. I mean, this time last year we had just started. or We had been on it for an entire year and a month. Wow. Time flies. It'd be in some ways, it seems that long, and in some ways, it doesn't. <laughs> exactly. It's almost like you can't remember a time where you we weren't doing this show, but then at the same time, I can remember our first, what do we call it, first show oh, that wasn't that, a show. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the day Skype was screwing up, too, and nobody could get into the server, ironically. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Yeah, we were supposed to start the week after, and I, I just happened to be listening to the station that morning, and no one could log in because Skype had updated, and my Skype allowed me to grab the server, and I'm like, well, Kathy, you want to start a week early? Yeah, like, okay. <laughs> and now, 53 weeks, or 55 weeks later, this is where we're at, still doing it. Oh, wow. And it's been such an incredible journey. It's been so much fun, and it's it's so great to be able to share so many people's lives with them, and you know to be there for them as they've been there for us. I mean, it's just absolutely amazing, and you know it has been tougher for us these last few weeks. And uh, during that time, it's been very comforting to have support of friends, family, callers. Uh, it, it's been really, really nice, and I thank each and every one of you for that. Yes, and for all those people that have put amazing comments on the YouTube page about Natalie, they have all been seen. Thank you very much. Yes, yes, thank you. Oh, now, yeah. let's get back to what we were just talking about, that, that little prayer of bless me as I walk the sacred soil. Mm. You know, before the break, um, we had been getting into a lot of the energies of what it takes to activate the infinite point of view, to get ourselves out of that finite point of view. When one takes up the words of bless me, bless me, bless me, you're asking for service from the unseen world, that higher source world. And what are we asking for? The wisdom to be humble, the wisdom to love even when love is not returned, knowledge to balance the way of being so you can heal your family, your tribe, and your nation, and then a choice to be of service to the fifth world of peace. Mm. You know, what was very powerful for me as well was the bit where it's grant me the wisdom to love, even when love is not returned. I mean, that is such a big challenge in almost everyone's life at some point in their life, whether it's happening right now, happened last month, happened last year. It is very, very hard to get that wisdom where you can go, it's okay. It really is okay. Um, and, and that knowingness is just, ooh, I don't even exactly. know what the words are. 
Yeah, mm. exactly. It's making a choice, once again, to activate that infinite point of view. Mm. Yes, most definitely. And to be conscious of it, you know, because that's not always such an easy thing. I mean, one of the things that, you know, we well, not one of the things, but one of the main things that's coming out from all of this today is that the knowingness to to know, to ask, to know, to do, to know, to even just know, um, you know, <laughs> that's a lot of no's, but just to know it is just, ooh, great. Right. So many people call us because something is in their unknown world. Mm. You know, for many, many years, 20 plus, 30 plus years, both you and I have been doing, you know, work about the unknown, helping people make it be known in their field somewhat so they're not afraid of it. Mm, yes, that actually is a very good way to put it because very often there is a lot of fear associated with the unknown um, and not all of it really is that warranted because it's just your way of viewing it. Um, so of course, some of it I'm not going to say is not unwarranted, but the uh, huge part of it is very much knowing that it's okay to face the unknown, that all will be well to this degree or that degree, and that you're safe in your journey. Yeah. In, in my Living the Mystical Life um, daily event, I made a very important statement. The universe is not working against you. Mm. It's yes. there to us. It's the finite point of view that has created paranoia at the most subtle layers of not trusting in spirit. Yes, and and to have that, you know, I mean, we're all have had that moment where we've thought that the universe is working against us. <laughs> exactly. You know, I mean, even last week, I at one point for <laughs> ten minutes, I thought that. <laughs> you know, and no one's immune from that. But then you have to sort of ground yourself and think, wait, this is just, you know, this is too much. Now just take a few deep breaths and think about it and then focus. And that's sometimes all it takes is just to ground yourself, think about it, focus, take a breath. Mm -hmm. Universe is not out to get you. <laughs> exactly. It's simplifying it to such a moment so that that prayer means something to you. Yes. When you're at the end saying, I'm choosing to be of service to the fifth world of peace, that means you're taking your infinite point of view, and one part of the infinite point of view is service to peace. An infinite point of view means you can have 10,000 things going at once instead of your limited point of view. Mm. You can set many things into action. The true and total multitask. Yeah without it hindering or bogging you down. Mm. And those simple words, today I am of service to the fifth world of peace. You brought a frequency of peace to the whole world. You've added your concept to the uncollective and collective that's out there. Mm. And I think this is very important for people. I mean, we've, you know, even the last few weeks or months, we've had callers that call in about you know, what can they do, you know, this and that's going on in the world and, you know, I need to do X, Y, Z and it's, but what you've put here in this document is very, this is something that you can do. Right. You right know, now. you are not powerless. You could do it right now, today, any point in time. It's a matter, are you going to take on the projections from others when doing it? Are you, are you going to do it just for yourself so that yourself acknowledges the, the total seen and unseen world mm. and, re and activate it's not working against you it's there to work with you mm. and to call upon that desire for peace yeah that's what everyone in the world wants peace be able to live with one another and, and not have you know things that are constantly bringing us into polarity or, or hatred or anger or shame blame or guilt or any of those other things that bring people in depression Mm. I'm trying to imagine that world right now. I can kind of visualize it. It's pretty beautiful. And that's why I put this document together mm. so that people can begin to visualize it. 
so they can challenge their finite way of thinking and say, hey, I can set aside a lot of things for a few minutes to make this moment mean something to me and just me. Mm. And that's also important to think about me, just me. Mm -hmm. Very important. All right, I'm going to read the next line, and it's the next paragraph, and it's titled, Invoking the Fifth World of Peace. Um, a lot of what I have is revocations, is revoking something. In an invocation, you are making a statement to this concept. And the statement goes as follows. Invoking the fifth world of peace. All species kind living and coexisting in Earth Mother's realm seek peace in their own way, their own expression. Peace is a frequency of love without strings or conditions attached. The fifth world of peace symbolizes an advanced knowingness of peace emanating from the heart space of the connected I am self born through the natural way of living on earth. That is a statement that defines peace as love without strings or covert motives. Mm. And when you say it, it just makes so much sense. Mm hmm you know, people that haven't thought of it in this way, I'm sure when they hear those words or read those words, they would think, oh, yeah, you know, it, it, it is that frequency of love without strings or conditions. You know, it, it, being able to accept that is just so difficult for so many people because they have so many preconceived ideas from all sorts of reasons. But to accept that that can be possible is challenging to many people, I'm sure. Yeah, because so much trepidation, so much violence, so much callousness is out there that's stopping people from realizing love is a frequency of peace. Mm. I mean, often these days, the word love is just so not used in, in a great way. It's so, used so casually that it takes moments like this to see that word and truly understand and comprehend what the word love means to me, to you, to the people listening, to the world in general. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, uh, it's got so much depth to it and so much emotion as well that is attached to it that it's, it's almost overwhelming. And that peace is a, a frequency of love is... Mm, I'm sure are foreign to many people, which is kind of sad, but let's hope that the more people say it, the more it is put out there, the more they can realize it. Name it to claim it. Yes, <laughs> very much so. It's so simple. Just by naming it, you can begin the power of reclaiming its energy that you may have given away. Mm. We use the word love so flippantly now. I love this, I love that, I love you, I don't love this. And we don't realize how much it separates us. Mm. That is the true. Very, the very last line is the I am self born through the natural way of earth living. The natural way of earth living is love as part of your frequency without the world of distraction around us. Instant gratification. It's being a heart-spaced giver and receiver. Hmm. I think receiver is also very important. Right. Because How many people call us and they give, 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 and not a lot, don't allow anything for themselves? Mm. Yes. Self-worth. Mm -hmm. It's so easy to think that you do have self-worth when everything around you shows that you don't. I mean, not that there's no self-worth, but worthy completely worthy, 100% worthy of this, like 100% worthy of love, 100% worthy of having this, 100% worthy of having people love you. Okay. Worthy of a peaceful frequency of love emanating from yourself. Mm. That's what babies are. Yeah. That's true. Okay. That's, That's the natural way of living. We learn how to not natural live as we grow older in this world of distraction and instant gratification. 
<laughs> I love that. <laughs> Not natural live. <laughs> I'm going to remember that one. It is that. But you put it in a very good way. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> and it, it's so easy to slip into it. It really is. Exactly. It's as easy as flipping a channel on the TV. Mm. Yes. And it, it's almost scary to realize how easy it is to slip into it. Yeah. You know, how many times are you watching a show and you flip? I, I don't hate that show. I hate that show. I love that show. You've just done two hate and two and one love instant gratifications. Mm. And your reward is ads. <laughs> your reward is ads. <laughs> so go figure. How does that work, right? <laughs> Yet every day you do the same thing. <laughs> yeah. But you're so, you're so right. It, it's like um, you take so much for granted that you lose sight of what it is. I mean, that sounds like such a you know an airy fairy way to put it, but it kind of is that. Unfortunately, we live in a world where the airy fairy is what is going to teach people how to get back into love, because the polarizations of love and not love, and the way love is defined, is so great. That it's hard to wade through all the truths of love and all the falsities of love. Mm. You know, a kid loves their teddy bear. Does that same kid, when they're 25, love their best pair of jeans the same way? Mm. Yet, to the unobserved looker, the words are the same. Ah. Mm. I know, love has... Today, the, the way we use the word love has morphed so much, you know. Mm -hmm. Relationships also change so much. Right. And you sort of have to keep reminding yourself to go back to the core of what it is you believe. Or is it that you're just that old-fashioned and everyone else is, you know, defining it for you? And when you take that moment to think about it, you're like, no, wait a minute. That, that, I don't care about everyone else. That, that's wrong. <laughs> it is this. I know it is this. <laughs> And to get back to that is yeah, not exactly. always easy. All right, so let's move on to the next one. You want to read the next one? It starts with um, all beings. Mm -hmm. What's that? Third. All beings of Earth come from the womb of a sacred feminine. This knowledge is not discarded or ignored in the fifth world of peace. To become one with the fifth world of peace means you have defined what the four previous worlds meant as ancestral teachers. The past taught us our traditions, esoteric practices and forms of forced and unforced evolution. The distilled teachings of the fifth world of peace means we have learned our history in cellular and DNA memories. When one understands the fifth world of peace and they learn to evolve out of the old ways and manifest the new ways of living in harmony, with all creature kind. The fifth world teaches us to how to let go of war, hate, shame, blame, and guilt. The fifth world teaches us through our past experiences why forced evolution is not within the divine co-creative will of all beings on a sacred journey through the multi multiverse as density manifested beings. Each being has the right to evolve and create their own way of sacred living without judgment or scorn from another. Each being needs their own time with the pregnant great mystery of their creation. The fifth world of peace means we have learned and relearned while we do not step on the journeys of others. Understanding the nuances of stepping on another's journey will help us define why the warriors of the rainbow have manifested within the fifth world of peace. To be the teachers of the past, present and future as manifested peacekeepers. We are all warriors of the rainbow. We have all survived the four previous teacher worlds of Earth Mother's realm. Uh, sorry, of Earth Mother's realms, and we have learned about war and ignorance. Now we make sacred the learning and relearning of non-competition, non-hierarchical order. With these as our makeup and blueprint, we grow and evolve the meaning of the fifth world of peace. It is time we pick up from where we left off as infinite beings on a sacred journey. 
Today is the day I accept the fifth world of peace as a celestial teacher spirit from Earth Mother. That's fifth powerful. World, oh, sorry. It's okay. <laughs> it is very powerful. How much? Wow. <laughs> Even reading it, I blown away by the words. My brain was working as I'm trying to read at the same time. That was absolutely amazing. You know, even the warriors of the rainbow, mm -hmm. that, that's just understanding those nuances. Wow. Stepping on another's journey. Mm. We, we as, as, as readers on the radio show, oftentimes get very unique scenarios where we cannot tell the person exactly the answer they want because they have to get to it on their own. And innately, we know if we do anything that, that points them in a direction that they won't have done it on their own and they will not have learned the lesson. Yes, that is true. I mean, there are quite a few instances where you know, as a reader, you cannot tell them a certain amount of things over a certain topic. Um, and even though you would like to tell them or show them the direction they're going, it would be, I, I'm going to say wrong, I guess, exactly. that's the right word, because they have not finished that particular part of the journey and they need to have done that first so that we can then move forward from that point. Right. And another example is children. You know, the old example, you know, you don't let the child, you know, pull the the... the the frying pan off the stove, but that yeah. child's eventually going to get old enough and start driving a car, and you cannot control them if they get into accidents on their own. Mm. Yes. Okay? That's where you have to learn. Stepping on the journeys of others is important to understand because there are times where we mean the greatest, but we are doing harm to somebody else. Mm. That, that is so true, and... You know, you, you show them the basics, you teach them the basics, especially with kids, mm -hmm. and you then just have to let them go and hope for the best because there's nothing else you can do. Free will is involved. That's right. And they will make their own choices. You know, it's not for us to say or judge. I mean, it's pretty hard sometimes not to judge when it's your own kids, but <laughs> exactly. <laughs> try your best. <laughs> All right. That is our music, and when we come back, we will continue. And welcome back, everyone. This has been one of those special, special, special shows. Both Kathy and I get an opportunity to share with people who are going through the great polarities of change right now a way to simplify life by expanding one's awareness. Kathy, welcome back. It's good to be back. Really good to be back. I'm loving today. <laughs> Me too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the next part um, mm -hmm. and so we can because we only got like a half hour left and I want to get through this. But then we're going to go back and we're going to we're going to go over what the whole document is. Okey doke. The fifth world of peace will expand our perceptions of what creature kind is. We will learn of other relations of rather blood, red blood worlds, sister and brother worlds to Earth Mother. Those red road relations will come to service in the fifth world of universal peace. It will be our rites of passage to accept the responsibility of manifesting the fifth world of peace so all celestial red road relations may find remedy and resolve to the four previous teacher worlds. We all become the peacemakers, peacekeepers, and peace procreators by choosing unconditional love as the root of our journey to the stars and beyond. Our journey to the stars will be filled with many, many new brothers and sisters. Many of their journeys will have been ongoing for thousands of years. They will teach us of the stars and other celestial relations, not of red blood relations. And we will teach them of earth-based natural living, the potentials of how to have natural childbirth, be mothers and fathers and responsible procreating sentient beings manifesting a peaceful journey. Many brothers and sisters have had a long red road walk. They will be tired and weary from the loss of great loves and friendships, for they live thousands of years to our hundreds. Many of them will be sick in the soul from loss, war, and isolation. It will be our service to the world, the fifth world of peace, to learn how to be healers, soul healers, and loving friends who look 
who will look, who will help those looking to let down from a long, long journey to the stars and beyond. Wow. Very powerful stuff. Okay. It went from the opening prayer of taking away what was distraction, the global manifestation of instant gratification, to opening our spirit up to an interconnected moment-to-moment -moment process, to looking at something that we defined as an Eastern doorway of perception, the Southern, the Western, the Northern, to acknowledge how those all come into one way of being, having those on the blue side speak to us, us speak back to the blue side, connect all of the forms of perception, summoning all of the victories of life, making a moment sacred and blessing yourself as you travel the great unknown, looking to be humble and find wisdom, choosing to be of service, and then invoking it in such a statement where all species kind here seek peace in their own way, their own expression, and they have to find that frequency of love that is also peace. We learned that the fifth world is an ancestral teacher. That means all the previous worlds that we've lived in, all those other lifetimes, had different forms of teachings. And this fifth world is about our cellular and our DNA memories, that which we hold the most truth in our soul. And when we learn to evolve peace to a whole new level, where we can love and not in a peaceful state without disharmony around us, we can let go of war, hate, shame, and guilt, and all those other past forced evolutionary experiences. We learn not to step on the journeys of others. We can accept that we are all warriors of all colors, the warriors of rainbows. They were our the previous teacher beings. And then we pick up from where we left off as infinite beings on a sacred journey. Accepting the fifth world of peace as a celestial teacher, meaning the macro scale of what it takes to create peace in this world for everyone. And by making these out loud statements in these prayer formats, we expand our perception of what living beings are and understand that they too have rights as conscious sentient beings. We are not all cattle to be served up on a plate of life. We're individual human beings with a great infinite potential surrounded by other infinite potential beings. And then we learn that the journey is filled with other beings beyond the red blood and blood and blue road relations. Those are the ones that came before us, ancient beings that have interacted with our world for so long that have generated its own process of understanding. Mm. I especially love don't step on the journey of others. That's yeah. so difficult sometimes. Yeah. You don't want that loved one to make a mistake, but you know deep down inside, no matter what you say, is going to drive them to make that choice even more. Mm. I know. And it, it's just so difficult sometimes to stand by and watch, knowing that, you know, you, you have that inner knowingness and you're powerless but the, the truth is it's it's not your journey and despite what you truly believe to be the outcome of it it is someone else's journey and even if there are tears it is something that they must experience for themselves that's right they must experience for themselves and this document is something each person has to experience for themselves in their own way you can write, anyone can write something like this. These are just words combined in an order that take the power of belief of what's been in the show for four and a half years, what's been in the teachings for, for five years, and combining them in an order of peace, reminding others to not step on the other's journeys. I've said that for years. Warriors of the Rainbow, Fifth World of Peace. It's all concepts. When we choose to be the manifested peacekeeper, that's taking that power of belief, instilling it into the self, and then sharing it through your prayers to the unseen world that is not working against you. <laughs> yes, the unseen world that is not working against you. <laughs> oh, we all know that world. <laughs> it is very difficult sometimes when you are feeling low to really truly conceptualize that as being so 
But one thing I'm going to just remind people about is think of it in a more logical sense. The unseen world, that infinite wisdom out there, the the universe, whatever you want to call it, there's a lot going on. There's, I don't know how many trillion people on this world. Do you really think that the universe would take that much effort just to work against you, one person? Exactly. <laughs> like, if that's the case, you should win the lotto. <laughs> <laughs> Several times. <laughs> And it, it's a difficult thing to conceive sometimes because there are so many things going on or you have a lot of trauma in your life. To be able to sit back and think, you know, sometimes it's not all about you. At that moment in time, it feels like it is. But you know somewhere inside that inner knowingness knows that a little time will pass and a lot will show you that it wasn't all about you. Sometimes you can't understand why things are happening or how it could possibly be a good thing in the long run. But only time will show you that. So patience is really important because when you have patience and then you get to the hindsight, which is a little bit later, then sometimes you can think, oh, yes, the universe was against me. I mean, not many people would agree with you, but <laughs> but okay. Right. But then in any many other ways, you're like, well, actually, it wasn't about me. It was about this and that. I was just collateral damage in exactly. this scenario. Yeah. Exactly. And then the other times where we think in the universe is working against you, and it isn't. It was all of your unseen world saying, don't make that dumb choice. <laughs> no, it was the smartest choice ever. <laughs> No, I must do it. I must do it. Look at the sign. See, I dropped a penny. That means that I must do it. <laughs> exactly. Sometimes we obsess and we lose focus when we obsess. In this last political cycle, many people got obsessed with a political process that was never going to give you a moment of victory, that was never going to give you any truth that was going to change this world in any way, shape or form. A lot of disappointed people out there. What is it, 109 million people voted? That's only a th like rough just over a third or a quarter, or just about 45% of the population. That means 45% of the population is in extreme polarity right now. All of their unseen worlds are turned over in a tumultuous state, trying to bring stasis, some way, some form of you know, static understanding. That many people are upset. But when you compare that to the whole world of 7 billion people, you know, there's, there's, you know, 7 billion people who were not affected by the election. And we live in our own little bubble of reality here in the United States. And documents like this are to take us out of that individuated nationalist bubble of limitation. To acknowledge ourselves as infinite beings with an infinite ability to accept the whole universe, not just what's in America, not just Trump or Hillary, not just what this election means, because this election means nothing, absolutely nothing. I think that's a very powerful word you've used as well, is the acceptance. Mm -hmm. It's like, even if you are upset, you do have to jump into acceptance and then move forward. And if you got the result that you wanted, then there's also a gracious acceptance and moving forward. Because exactly. at the moment, there's a lot of, you know, you have to wonder, did people forget how to win graciously and lose graciously in that, mm -hmm. you know, the, the grander sense of things? Because the election is done. <laughs> so the result exactly. is out. And we all have to accept it, find a way to move forward in a positive way. Yeah. Move forward in such a positive way that we can let go of the global infrastructure of distraction and instant gratification long enough so we can find love for ourselves and then our family and then whatever else you choose to do with your love energy. Find your local bubble. That, that which loves you and constantly is interacting with you. Fortify that in such a way so that you can feel good with it. Mm. Fill that bucket back up. Get rid of all that negativity and waste of space. Exactly. <laughs> Fill it up with important stuff like love, acceptance, 
abundance in all great things. Mm-hmm. Abundance in all great things. Mm. You know, that's that's something both you and I constantly are trying to bring to people's field of energy. Abundance, because mm. many of them are are not necessarily lacking abundance. They lost the key to the lock where all the abundance is. Mm. That's exactly true. And also, sometimes they don't see the path because it's overgrown with weeds. Mm-hmm. So it's just clearing that path. So they're like, oh, yeah, there it is. Because you're so close, so mm-hmm. close, yet you're just walking around in circles as opposed to going, ah. <laughs> exactly. Well, <laughs> okay then. <laughs> so sacred space is something else that's very, very, very important. Mm, yes. Okay, I'm going to read the, the next one. It's a fir- few further pages down since we only got a limited amount of time. I'm going to go to this, this one. And this one, both you and I have talked about many, many, many times. The idea of sacred space defines itself on many planes of existence. It represents the human need to have possessions that help ground us in this world. Sacred space is the room we give ourselves to be. We learn at a young age about beliefs people hold to be true. We continue to learn about others' sacred space. At times, we get confused about what is your sacred space and what is others' sacred space. Each of us have a sacred point of view. Each of us hold different truths to be self-evident. The presence of the sacred space represents a time of clearing out of old beliefs we took from others. It's time you mark your space with your essence, your love, your human needs. It asks you to know why you've, who you have given permission to be in your sacred space. It asks you to tell those who are not welcome to leave. It asks you to stand up to your convictions, respect your sacred space. Enforce the rules you've set up. Release the rules that have allowed others to steal the serenity of your sacred space. It asks you to honor the sacred point of view you've been creating and co-creating with Earth Mother. Nature teaches us how to be ourselves in the purest way. If we listen and watch, we learn from every lesson of human living, living given by the animals, the change in the wind, the father sky, the mother earth, and all other family relations. Each aspect of our world has its own space in which to create. In that space, if it's respected by others, growth continues in harmony, just like a forest. A simple teaching. The idea of sacred space, human need to have possessions grounded in the world. It's that place you give yourself to be where you can shut out the rest of the world and not have to worry about the projections of others. That's so true. Sacred space is just paramount to sanity (laughs) in so many so many ways and to have that space where you can feel safe and evolve or contemplate or create is just so important I think people in many instances don't truly realize that and especially if you coming from a country let's say like in Asia where literally space is a premium you really don't have that much physical space, it becomes even easier to understand the idea of sacred space. Whereas more in the worst, I think people get a bit confused about personal space and sacred space. Whereas in many ways they're so intertwined, but either way, it's still sacred and necessary. Right. Everyone has earned the right to have their own sacred space. Yes. You know, in Asia, that is why there are so many temples everywhere. So they can go to the temple and feel sacred enough in there to let down and be themselves in their spiritual format. Mm, That's very, very true. Because there really isn't literally a lot of space. Right. (laughs) That's why there's all (laughs) temples everywhere. (laughs) And even there, you're jostling with people. (laughs) Right. But you're right. You're right. And it's... Being able to have that and feel it and know within you that it is that sacred space is in so many ways such a security feeling for a person. Um, 
the safeness and oh, sorry, I, I, sorry, that's probably not a good word. The sense of safety and um, um, existence is really important for, for yourself. And it's not just about other people. Of course, you must respect their sacred space too. But being able to honor it for yourself is really important. Exactly. Because if you don't honor it for yourself, how are you truly loving yourself? That's so true. You know, we, you, everyone on the radio show that regularly listens hears both you and I say self-healing and self-nurturing is the hardest part of the journey. Mm. Oh, it's so hard. <laughs> and, but the journey is self-healing and self-nurturing so you have enough energy, enough willpower, and enough drive to do your own great work, to define your own, your own being as greatness. Mm. And it's, it is very difficult to find the time in your everyday busy life schedule to self-nurture. Uh, we all have 10,000 excuses while we don't have time for it. But when you're all run ragged and you run down and you're knackered and depressed, etc., you think, why didn't I find that time? You know, exactly. It, it, it's it it is of such great paramount importance to look after yourself, to do the self nurturing, to allow yourself that time and space, because if you don't, in the end, you're not that much good to everyone else because you are no longer operating at your optimum. Exactly. And then you lose what your optimum is, and then you you spend three years at your the lowest levels, and you didn't even realize you were at ten percent of your total potential. Mm. Oh, very much so. And you know, self nurture, looking after oneself is you know it's a daily challenge. I mean, yep. the last month I, I fall into the same category as like you know I know I should have taken more time and I haven't, and now I am more run ragged and I look back and think well why didn't I why I could have but then I thought oh no I have to do this I have to do that you know and now I am even more tired than I was two weeks ago <laughs> yeah. so what what do what message do I need to show myself that I need to take it a bit easier and you know so it, it's a daily challenge for everybody no matter what stage of spirituality your or enlightenment you're at Everyone faces that day-to-day -day challenge of looking after themselves and doing right by themselves. Mm -hmm. And doing by right by themselves in the seen and the unseen world. Beginning to acknowledge that it has potential and influence that is very positive for you. Mm. Yes, that is so true. That is so true. Mm. You know, how, how many times do people come and ask you, should I move? Both me and you. Mm -hmm. And we look into the future of potentials. Mm. Okay? We look. Are they getting the energy out of the place they need? Most of them aren't because they don't give time for the sacred energies. They don't acknowledge the unseen world that's saying, hey, this isn't the best place for you. Mm. And often it is very difficult because your whole life is evolving around a location. So even though your optimum might be to change locations, sometimes it's practically not as simple. Exactly. So then that's another issue that you have to address. Yeah, not only address, do something about. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, okay. <laughs> Addressing is one thing. That, that's, you know, yes. you told it something. Well, does that, is that going to change it? That's yes. continued self-healing and self-nurturing by enforcing your sacred space rules. Who belongs there? Who doesn't? What inner voice that's constantly leading you into depression or inner voice that's constantly helping you argue with someone who's not even in the room? Mm. Yes. <laughs> yes, I think we've all been there. Right. <laughs> A very heated discussion with yourself, really, isn't it? <laughs> And when we empower the sacred space, that goes to those internal voices that are negative within us. Where we do have to have the willpower to say, I'm healing myself now. And that is not an appropriate state of mind to bring into my energy. Mm. 
I look for you. I, I observe you habit pattern. And I now say in my sacred space, you cannot do that. You have stepped on my journey for the last time. Oh, I like that. I see you too, habit pattern. That's right. <laughs> stepped on my journey for the last time. <laughs> I poo-poo you. <laughs> exactly. That's the last time you're going to make me think about farting in an elevator ever again. Exactly. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, another line I really loved with what you were talking about with the when you were reading The Sacred Space was, nature teaches us to know ourselves in the purest way. If we listen and watch, we learn every lesson of human living is given by the animals. You know, I mean, there, there is more, but th that part of it to me is so much of what life is about. It's like nature does teach us. It really does in its purest form. Whether or not we choose to see it and take that on board is such a different story, but it is there. Right. Look at your little dog, Ava, how, how she teaches you about unconditional love every day. Oh, I know, you know, every day she shows me in oh, thousands of ways what unconditional love is and what joy it is to be alive and how much you can affect someone else's life. Um, it, it, it's just amazing. And it's it, with a bark. Yeah, and yeah. it's humbling. It really yeah. is humbling. You know, we can get that, that energy from whatever we observe we come from that heart space observation point. Mm. Our pets have been traveling this journey with us. At times they've been brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers, but this lifetime they chose to be a pet. Mm. Everyone's looked at a dog or a cat that they've had and go, I know there's a human in there. Mm. There's infinite love in there. Yes, that is so true. Right. And know, it's that recognition as well, isn't it? Right. Dogs and cats aren't there for instant gratification of love. They're there to teach the long, enduring lesson of unconditionality of love. It's so mm. powerful to have that presence. Mm. It, is, it has guided people through countless lifetimes. Oh, I, I know exactly what you mean. And sometimes it can just be in a bird that flies by in your garden. Right. You know, you've just never seen that particular kind of bird before, and yet somehow it just sits there. Or a squirrel, you know, right. they just or, sit there and stare at you, and you're like, oh, or it's wow. out of the porch, and, and a hummingbird comes up and goes to from flower, mm. flower to flower. You know, and then you actually got to sit there and witness it so close. Or a rainbow comes down right in your yard, and you run up to it. Yeah. <laughs> Where's the pot of gold? I don't see it. Right. But it is, rainbows are absolutely amazing thing, absolutely amazing. And I don't think anyone can look at a rainbow and not smile. Exactly. You know, it just, sorry, go on. Children laugh at everything, just about mm -hmm. everything. Because when they go to that unknown factor, they're not afraid. And that laughter converts fear into joy. Mm hmm. Yeah, that is so true. To hear a child laugh, that joy deep within is so beautiful. It's very heartwarming. Yeah. You know, and then we have those moments where we have what we call dark humor, dark laughter. No? Mm -hmm. What is that really doing? It's reminding you that there is a grumbly part of you that will see humor in something that's in polarity. Mm -hmm. mm, that's a litmus test of what's really going on in my subconscious, that i laughing at that. Mm, I hadn't really thought of it like that, but yeah, it is a good way to look at it. Mm -hmm. Laughter is always trying to transform whatever it is, into higher frequency energies. And when we have our dark laughter, our dark humor, it does serve a purpose to get us out of the polarity of the moment. But it's still a process that says something is there that needs work on at the future. Mm -hmm. 
I guess it's also being able to recognize it. Exactly. Name it to claim it once again. Yeah. <laughs>